Jeremy, hey, congratulations <laughs> on your documentary, Secret Mall Apartment. Thank you. Thanks for chatting. Hey, not a problem, not a problem. Thanks uh, for uh, hopping on and more of a congratulations that is being showcased at South by Southwest, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, I feel great. This is actually my third movie um, in the last six years to play at South by, which, yeah, which is pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm pretty thrilled about it. I'm also like really pumped about like being associated with South by because it's such an incredible festival. But I would say that this is the most the most South by Southwest of all of them. It really just kind of hits so many um, themes that I think are relevant for people in Austin and people what South by Southwest is about. Like it's very much in their ethos. What was your previous two films also documentaries? Yeah, I was there in 2018 with a documentary called The World Before Your Feet. And that was about uh, Matt Green, who was walking every single street of New York City. That was a feature. And then in 2021, I um, was there with a documentary called Lily Topples the World, which won the Grand Jury Prize for documentary. And it was about this young YouTuber who's the world's greatest domino toppler. And we watch her as she kind of becomes this incredible role model and so global celebrity. And Secret Mall Apartment is now my third one. And it it's unusual for me because it is much less of like a ride along movie. This is a story that's like this incredible, like, you know, you can't believe it when you're watching it. And it just these people lived inside of a busy mall for four years secretly and found this space. And um, it also was very unusual because they had filmed so much of this experience. They had filmed many hours of them doing the secret apartment. So for me as a filmmaker, it was very different because it was it was almost like one of those like archival movies, you know, and it became a, um, a documentary where we're looking at all this old footage and watching that happen and also hearing from all the participants now, you know, 17 years later. Well, well tell me this. How how did you personally come across this story and um, and what basically sparked you saying, you know what, I should make a documentary? I had met the main character, Michael Townsend, when I was filming my previous movie, Lily Topples the World. And Michael's this incredible artist. Um, in fact, all the people that were in the secret apartment, there were eight artists, all of them. All, you know, very in interesting and unusual artists in their own right. And I had met Michael um, when he was doing um, a mural. And I was so blown away by his artwork that I just had to meet him. And we became friends very quickly. And then, you know, we had a lot of like the same kind of, you know, we, we we liked the same thing. A lot of our interests overlap. And then one night he told me about this crazy story where he and, you know, seven other people were kind of angry at the Providence Place Mall because it had it had really restructured their entire city. It was this, this kind of gentrification gone gone wild. And they snuck in one night and found this space and decided that they would move in, you know? And it was like this weird act of, you know, um, occupying an unoccupied space and standing up to gentrification. And they ended up living there on and off for four years. And Michael had been approached by a number of people to make this documentary or make something about this movie. All kinds of filmmakers approached him over the years. Um, you know, the story is not totally unknown. It became like kind of urban legend in, in Rhode Island. So when I approached Michael, I was really taken not just by what they were doing in the apartment, but also all this other incredible artwork that they were doing on the side. And I realized quickly that the secret apartment you know, behind us was almost like the, I want to say almost like a Trojan horse of a part of the story, but that the real story was like all this incredible art that they were doing, um, charitable work, 
you know, volunteer art, going into hospitals and doing artwork, doing memorials for victims of 9-11. And that suddenly I realized like, wow, this is so much bigger story. And that's when I, Michael and I sort of came and decided to make the movie together. Now, of course, you know, the one of the main characters is the Providence Mall itself. Uh, did, did, did you actually visit the Providence Mall? Obviously, you didn't have access to uh, the secret apartment because this happened so long ago. Yeah, this happened from 2003 to 2007. And since then, the mall has changed owners a bunch of times and it's kind of had its own ups and downs as a lot of malls in America have. Um, at the time, it was this glorious building that, you know, was aimed to kind of, you know, re- kind of revolutionize Providence, you know, create a Providence renaissance. And I don't know if it ultimately did that in the end, but it became this very kind of uh, controversial space in Providence. Um, I filmed this movie over two years and I, you know, was all over Providence and filming with them and going right up into the mall and sort of understanding where it was and where the secret apartment was. And the movie also does all these things to help a viewer understand like exactly where the apartment was. We build models, we build sets, you know, all these things to help bring an audience in deeper. Yeah. That, that, what, um, that section of the, uh, of the documentary was a, pretty interesting the fact that you actually recreated a set uh, tell tell us about uh, your process because that that's usually that's unusual to me that uh, documentaries yeah. would actually create a whole, whole set and bring your subjects into a set because you didn't have access to the, the real apartment yeah it's exactly what you said you know i didn't the, the apartment no longer existed you know so it was like you know, how do you show, how do you take a, a, a viewer into this secret apartment? How do you show them, you know, and not just it be like, well, it was, it was this, it was that, it was that, you know, it was the, it was this. I really wanted a viewer to go and be and immerse themselves and be like, understand like what it looked like and be there and almost like feel it. So very early on, we had discussions about like, could we like, what if we rebuilt it and how would that be? And, you know, I was also inspired by this notion that all eight of the people that lived in the mall, they would constantly say to me, they would say, yeah, it, the, the space was almost this kind of, it lived in this kind of gray area between reality and fantasy. And it was a space that we almost thought of as almost like a movie set, you know, a, a, a stage that they could do all these things in and sort of treat it as their own piece of staged artwork. And that was really inspiring to me. And I realized like, wow, why don't we do this as, as bring you guys and involve you guys and build it. And almost just like what you're saying, it's, it becomes like a stage. And that was something that I really wanted to explore. And then it allowed me to bring all these artists back and they could kind of re-experience it and, and step back into it, you know? And for a viewer, it allows you to kind of like finally see it. One of the things that's amazing is that they filmed so much footage, you know, when they were in the secret apartment, they filmed a ton of footage, but they filmed with really, really low quality cameras. So it was, it, the footage is incredible, but it's just like, you know, postage stamp kind of footage. So it also allowed us an opportunity to kind of like bring it back to life and all for, for a newer, newer time. And um, yeah, it was very exciting to be able to do something like that. So how did you, uh, how much footage was that, that they actually accumulated over that time? And how did you, clean it up or restore some of the footage because if if I recall correctly that time period I want to say cameras at best was like four megapixel or maybe two I don't I can't recall so yes yeah, so when they were in the secret apartment from 2003 to 2007 they they all had these like little tiny cameras and it was a camera called a Pentax Optio 
And now we look at it and we're like, oh my God, that is just horrible quality. It was, uh, you know, for the tech nerds out there, it was 320 by 240 pixels. So that's roughly smaller than like a Zoom screen, okay? And it was 10 frames a second. So um, again, this is worse than, you know, a Zoom, this is way worse than a Zoom recording. And um, yet they filmed over 20 hours of footage. So it's not like they filmed 100, 200 hours. They only filmed about 20 hours. But out of that 20 hours, we were able to construct almost like a timeline of them building this apartment in this most incredible way. You know, it's almost like, and then, and doing all these incredible things and crazy things, you know, bringing in cinder block and building walls and building, putting up doors and bringing in furniture. And, you know, they got all that on camera and, you know, it's, you're, you just can't believe what you're watching when you see it. So it was really incredible for me as a filmmaker to be able to like work with that material. Now your, your, your main subject, Michael, was, was he, uh, was he the leader of the group um, per se, or or was he, I want to say, because it's technically public knowledge, he was the only one that got caught. <laughs> right. So both. He was the only one that he sort of took the fall for the team. Um, and again, we'll, viewers will hopefully discover, you know, exactly how it happened and what went down. But he was also... Um, he was there a lot of the, he was the, the, the ringleader in a way, you know, he's this really kind of freaky genius artist and he was a mentor for many artists in Providence. And he also has a real political spirit as well. So when the mall came into that area and sort of re, you know, demolished a whole area around it, particularly this sort of forgotten back area behind the mall where Michael and many artists live, he sort of re decided, well, we have to do something. And he didn't really know what to do. He didn't really know what, what he wanted to do. Would it be public? Would it be personal? And he kind of led his, came up with this crazy idea and it meant so much for them. And it was a reason for them to kind of stand up to the mall. Now, I understand, you know, the mentality of uh, or my, Michael's motivations to participate in your documentary because he, he, he has that personality who wants to tell the story. But the seven others have been hidden this entire time and they never got caught. How did you convince them to be part of your project and why now? Why do they want to tell that story now? I guess I, you know, I was persistent. <laughs> that was one. You know, I went, I met them all personally. I, I went to each one personally. I spent time with each one. And I, I think that they were all very appreciative that like, I, that I wasn't just here because like, oh my God, they lived in a mall. You know, that wasn't ever my approach. And I think over the years, a lot of stories had come out about this and a lot of, and they had been approached by other filmmakers who really wanted the sensational, oh my God, they lived in a mall, they were eating at the food court, they were going to the Cineplex, they were going into Pottery Barn and just this kind of like very kind of tabloid, you know, look at this. And I think my approach was very different, which was, uh, that's amazing. And I love all that, but I also really am inspired by what they were doing as artists at the time. You know, as I mentioned that the mall almost was their side project. They were doing all these different, you, you know, incredible artwork uh, on their own voluntarily. And I think when I, I really approached them all and told them that that was really what I was interested in. I was interested in this kind of bigger picture of this, um, they all really wanted to participate and they all thought it was a great time to look back. And, you know, I think we all are dealing still with gentrification in our cities and, 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 you know, change is inevitable. It's not, you know, that's not bad per se, but I, I think we all deal with these like big monster corporations or monster projects that are, are, you know, um, 
kind of redefine our lives and we don't really have much say in that. And I think that problem still persists now more and more, you know, if anything, more than it used to. And I think that still really resonated with them to, to get this story out now. So after you um, finish this film, I guess the the question, I, and I think you posed it in your film, is what were their true motivations? Did you think it was a prank, an art project, or just a simple protest? I think what's so interesting about the apartment in the mall is that it, at different times, it transforms. You know, you could look at it and be like, oh, this is one of the this is one of the world's greatest pranks. You know, they live in a mall for four years. What a prank, you know, and they figured out how to get in and bring in furniture and they figure out alarms and how to do the timing. And it's just an incredible, incredible prank. But then on the other hand, it also kind of transforms and it becomes a space where they it almost like a headquarters for them for them to figure out how to do their volunteer work. You know, they were doing all this charitable artwork and, and they were using the space for those purposes. And then you could also look at it and be like, wait, is the secret apartment a work of art on its own? You know, and what does that mean if it's a work of art? You know, there's been a lot of art ideas about like living your life in, in art and, creating a lifestyle of art and is the secret apartment an example of that and then it gets into these like ideas about public versus private space and who owns what and how stores and malls and city um, buildings like who owns those spaces and what are we entitled to do and it just what was so fascinating to me was how it always transformed just when I thought I had a handle on what the apartment was, it would suddenly become something else. And I think that was the case for them too. You know, they maybe started it as a, as a you know, a, against gentrification. And by the end, they love them all. And they are, you know, it becomes this refuge for them, this place of peace. So yeah, I think that's what's so incredible about it. It's one of those Heisenberg things where the more you look at it, the, you, you, you can't really define it and it keeps changing right before your eyes. Well, I mean, Michael, in, in, in your film indicates several times that art is life or life is art <laughs> back and forth. No doubt. And that was something that I also was really inspired by that. Here were these people that were so committed to their ideas. They're not doing this. You know, they were living for four years. They weren't trying to publicize it. That was also really interesting with the seven of the eight artists. You know, they all kind of went in, went into the woodwork. You know, you, they didn't want to be, they didn't want to get any notoriety or fame from this, that it was something very meaningful that for them as people, as artists. And that also really resonated with me as well, that sometimes we do these things that are really important for us and that aren't about everybody else in a way. And, and that was, I think, another neat thing about the apartment. It was their space for them to explore all kinds of ideas. And Jeremy, for um for yourself, uh, you know, this being your third documentary at South by Southwest, wh why do you love this uh, this type of storytelling? Why why do you love uh, being a documentary filmmaker? Um, you know, I I've been privileged to really get to make documentaries about really really unique people, um, and I I think that's what really keeps me so excited and inspired. You know, um. There, look, there's a, incredible documentaries that are about celebrities and there's incredible documentaries that are social issue movie documentaries, you know, about an important topic. But what really excites me is getting to meet people. Um, I'm very much a people person. I, I'm very inspired by people and what they do and, and the amazing things that we all can do. And that's what I think that is a thread between all my movies. It's about like in people doing incredible things, not always for money, not always for fame, but just because it's what they're passionate about. And I think that's why I really love making documentaries. I get to kind of keep meeting those kinds of people. 
Are you already uh, in the process of your next documentary or are you just looking for the next subject? I am very far along in a documentary, um, in two documentaries um, that are about to start. And I'm hoping, um, you know, both of them also are within this zone of just like really incredible people, um, passionate people who are doing things kind of differently from everybody else. Well said. Well, let me leave it, leave it off with one last question for you, Jeremy, as you know, folks at South by Southwest have a chance to watch Secret Mall Apartment and hopefully it goes to more film festivals or distribution for more people to uh, to watch and, you know, learn about the story. It's the after viewing this film, what is the one most important take you hope audiences walk away with? I think it, you know, I think it's about living your life with meaning, you know, and that's a very deep concept, especially when we're talking about a bunch of people that secretly lived inside a mall. So I think that that is, is a big takeaway for me, that whether they're, you're, you're creating a secret apartment, whether you're doing your own work, your own art, your own music, your own films, Whatever it is, um, there's a living those you living your life with that kind of passion is very powerful and it's very meaningful. And I think that that's one of the takeaways that I want people to come away with. You know, here were these guys that just said, oh, we're taking over this space in the mall. And they really, really, really went all out and did it for four years. And I think that is really incredible and, and powerful. Well said. Well, Jeremy, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation with us about Secret Mall Apartment. Everyone's going to enjoy that. Uh, it, it It is very fitting for South by Southwest. That That's for sure. Awesome. Thanks so much. I love uh, chatting with you. It was really fun. Hey, thank you. Next time. Thank you. All right.